Hello friends, this video on system of particles and rotational motion part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us look at the torque and the angular momentum for a system of particles because so far we were discussing, we introduced the terms angular velocity, angular acceleration, torque, angular momentum, everything for a single particle, right? So now let us look at the torque and the angular momentum for a system of particles. So let us look at the angular momentum for a system of particles. So we denote the total angular momentum of the system by capital N. So what would be the total angular momentum of the system? That will be the sum of the angular momentum of each of the particles. So this will be L1 plus L2 plus L3 up to Ln. So this can be written as summation of Li where I varies from 1 to N. Right? Now we know that L is equal to R cross P. This is how angular momentum is defined. So we can say that Li is equal to Ri cross Pi. Therefore, we can define the total angular momentum of the system as summation of Ri cross Pi. Right? So this is how we define the angular momentum for a system of n particles. Right? Now let us look at the torque for a system of particles. So what do we know about torque? We know that torque is equal to dl by dt. Right? This is what we know from our, from our knowledge from the previous slides. So we can say that the total torque of the system will be equal to summation of the torque of each of the particles. Right? So this can be written as summation of dli divided by dt. Right? Now we also know that torque is equal to R cross F, right? So we can write torque of ith particle is equal to Ri cross Fi. Therefore, torque becomes equal to summation of Ri cross Fi, summation over I. Right? Now whenever I talk, I talk about torque, I am talking about both external torque as well as internal torque. Right? The way we talk about force. When I talk about force, I talk about both internal force and external force. But since the internal force, they all cancel out in pairs with each other. Therefore, the net internal force becomes zero. So similarly is the case. But in this case of torque, how we can define the torque external as summation of Ri cross Fi external. Similarly, we can define torque internal as summation of Ri cross Fi internal. Right? Now we know that the internal force inside the system cancel out in pairs as per Newton's third law. As a result, this is zero. So if this is zero, torque internal will also be equal to zero, right? So therefore, we can say that torque external will be equal to, so torque external will be equal to dn by dt, right? So for a system of n particles, the total external torque acting on the system is equal to d by dt of the total angular momentum of the system, right? So if you look at this expression, that is equation 1. So in this equation, we saw that torque is equal to summation of dli by dt. Now from here, equation 2, we saw that torque is equal to torque external because torque internal is 0. So instead of torque in this expression, I put torque external. This is equal to summation of dli. That is what? That is nothing but dl because capital L is summation of small li divided by dt. So that is how we get torque external is equal to dl by dt. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.